an article by Ohimai Amaize. A close look at the history of Nigeria shows how much the youth have featured prominently in political leadership and governance. But in recent times, the story is not exactly the same. Shehu Shagari became a federal legislator at the age of 30 and a minister at the age of 35. M.T. Umbu became a minister at the age of 25 and Nigeria's high commissioner to the United Kingdom at the age of 26. Richard Akinjide became minister of education at the age of 32. Maitama Sule became oil minister at the age of 29. Audu Ogbe was a minister at the age of 35 and he is still serving till today as a minister and the list goes on and on. In contrast, today's reality is a policy where Nigerian youths are used as election consultants, social media battalions and political thugs. So today we are asking in respect to leadership and governance, how can we change the narrative and catch them young? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. Twitter at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WaysShow. Leadership and governance, mm -hmm. catching them young. young. Let me start with Unoma, actually, because I actually want to hear if, um, Unoma's thoughts on this. Unoma, how do you think we can catch them young? How do you think we can begin to encourage y the youth now to go into leadership and governance? You know, though, like I would always mention whenever I have the opportunity, mm. I think a very core aspect that we are lacking grossly in is the area of mentorship. Yeah. I see, you know, from what you are reading, you could see that there were a lot of young people mm -hmm. or the people that we see as elders today started young. Then yes. they had people that they were looking up to who groomed them and who helped them to find or who trusted mm -hmm. them enough to actually assign roles to them that began to give them the exposure that they needed yeah. and become the leaders that they are today. Mm -hmm. But we see a situation in today's narrative where we literally had to uh, have a bill passed yeah. for people for the not too young to run to, to, to rule, uh, to run a bill. Yeah. And we keep having issues where people are told, oh, we are too young, or it's not your turn, and things like that. If we don't give the young people the opportunity to grow and to show forth their skills, then really, who is going to take the place of the older ones who are probably getting too old to, to, to be able to <laughs> carry the pressure of leadership? So it's it's a core case, uh, it's a core area for me. The place of mentorship. I can't overemphasize the fact that we need credible leaders who can be emulated by young people who have the strength, the zeal, the tenacity to be able to take uh, the baton from these leaders and take their place in the place of leadership and governance. And until we get that aspect right, I think we will continue to struggle in being able to catch them young. There's so many people who have the capacity, yeah. but they don't have people who can push them forward mm -hmm. and put their weight behind them, helping them to navigate the political space. Mm. Oh, thank you so much, Oloma. Do you have them very quickly? Let's hear your thoughts. So um, I agree with everything Oloma said. I think um, it, it just sums up everything. But I would also like to add that um, it's important that um, we, we remember that to move forward, sometimes we have to go back in time. We have to remember. We have to remember where we are coming, coming from. from. Yes. And that goes to history how much history is very important okay. in our schools. Mm -hmm. You know, when um, we develop this curiosity in our children, they begin to see that, oh, I can actually aspire to be this. Yeah. I can be a change, a change leader. I can be an agent of change. So if we take the message back into schools, it really doesn't matter whether it's private or public. You know, just get it into schools and um, using all languages possible mm. the end point is we want to you know create a cohesive society and in order to do that we need to get the buy-in of everybody, everybody. Yeah. yeah thank you so much Jenna. very well said tonight is actually a very special episode because we have a special guest now miss tonight i'll be doing something very different from what we would usually do 
So Honorable Raphael Ikunyi Minu is a person of exceptional abilities who as a teenager had become an inspiration and built a rich influence base amongst his peers, local and state governments. He's the former Speaker of the Lagos State Children Parliament and Executive Director of Preacher Child Initiative, an NGO for child rights advocacy as well as child development. He's also a child development advocate and entrepreneur, a visionary leader and an upcoming, up and coming policy maker with the perception that as long as he can conceive it, he can achieve it. And tonight in the studio live with us, we have Honorable Raphael. Good evening. It is a pleasure to have you here with Very us tonight. Evening. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I mean, see, anytime I see young people doing it, it I makes me happy. <laughs> like, it just gives me a certain level yeah. of joy that I can't even contain. So I'm sorry if I'm all smiles and all of that. I'm just really excited <laughs> to okay. have you in the it's studio okay. with us today. So how what's, what's going on? How are you? I'm very well. Very well, thank you. All right, great. So first things first, let me ask, how did you get to this point? Um, well, for me, it has been a, a very interesting journey from mm. secondary school, you know, representing my school in various um, inter-school competitions, um, like the debate and the spelling bees and all of that. And then it gave me an edge and I got nominated into the Lagos State Children's Parliament. Mm. And eventually uh, I got elected as the speaker of the parliament and our tenure ran from 2016 through 2017 and through 2020 mm. so it was an amazing time mm. it exposed me to leadership policy making governance and yeah it was a mix of exposure learning and building my capacity as a young person mm. yeah so did you experience any i'll call it talking down at you to mm. say oh you young boy what do you know what you don't understand yeah uh i sure had um experiences like that but um thankfully i come from a family where my surface team has been built already mm. i have the understanding mm. of who i am and uh what i am made of so mm. uh, that's childhood of you know identity Mm. and self-esteem helped me to navigate through um, whatever backlashes or whatever um, negative or derogatory statements I got along the process. So, in essence, the role of parenting mm. cannot be overemphasized. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I, 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 I like that you brought that in as well yeah. so that people actually understand that, look, you always have to encourage these people to be whatever, to achieve their full potential. Because yeah. if you shut a child down, trust me, you're, you're, you're covering that child's lights in the bushel, yeah. which you shouldn't really true, do. True. It's very wrong, yeah. wrong parenting. Okay, so, uh, Majola. I'm just... I'm just looking you're, at you're him. You're perplexed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at him and, first of all, well done. Thank mm. you very much. I mean, I, I look at you and I'm seeing a man speaking from a place of confidence yes. and a man who truly sees beyond what, unfortunately, even us, let me, pardon me, using the word adults, you know, we, we tend to see all the negatives. But you, I mean, you, you're looking at leadership from a totally different eye. And you're, okay, so my question to you is, do you really think there's a future? I mean, from your exposure, your experience, some of the things you've had to navigate, do you look at Nigeria and say, oh, but there's potential. We've not even done anything. We can do so much more. Or do you think it's a lost cause? Well, I think uh, there is a future for Nigeria. And it is... Um, evident in the, num the kind of youth participation that we have today mm -hmm. in politics. Um, we can refer to the pre just concluded general mm -hmm. ele elections. We see a lot of young people coming out. Uh, I, I could make reference to the lady Rukayat um, Shitu who emerged uh, you know, as a member of the yeah. House of Assembly of Kara State and amongst many others like that. So, and this is as a result of um, the Not Too Young to Run yeah. bill that was yeah. passed into law in 2018 by the President, Mama Dubari, as well as, you know, the prevalence of social media. So, I think a lot of young people are becoming more aware of the political space. Mm. However, I think it is important to note as young people that the political space is changing from politicking to competence. Mm. I, 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 I see it as, I see a future in Nigeria where um, we have medical practitioners, 
professionals in their fields taking up political positions. And you know, imagine having an education is becoming the commissioner or minister of education, mm. having um, a medical practitioner becoming minister, minister of health. health. Mm. So all of that is, that is what the political space is becoming. And young people need to be very much aware. So the best way to go into politics, to prepare for politics, is by becoming a thought leader in your profession. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. That's profound. Do you understand? Deeply like, profound. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, so you can tell that he's yeah. very, very political, literate, and sound. So yeah. he knows what it is that he's doing. That, yeah. See, this is, these are the things that we're told. This is what we need. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I, I would also, I would love for us to continue this conversation. I mean, I can't wait to hear what Norma also has to, has mm -hmm. to say. But then let's take a short break, and then when we come back, we'll continue the conversation. Thank you for staying with us. It's been an interesting conversation so far with Honorable Raphael in the studio with us today. He is a person of exceptional abilities who is very well well grounded, I must say, in the political space as well. Okay, um, Norma, please go ahead. I know you have you've been burning to say some things. <laughs> I loved uh, his uh, perspective about putting square pegs in square holes. And uh, something that caught my attention is uh, on his profile where it said that he is um, a policy maker with a perception that as long as he can conceive a thing, he can achieve it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a quote by Napoleon Hill that I really, really resonate with. So immediately I saw that, I said, okay, this is one to definitely watch out for. So in line with that, Raphael, what is your inspiration, I mean, behind becoming involved in youth leadership and governance? What was that thing that inspired you to, to navigate this space and to also be involved in child development and advocacy? Okay, thank you very much for this question. So, um, regarding child advocacy, I grew up in an environment where uh, um, child abuse and, you know, juvenile delinquency is prevalent. And um, growing up in that kind of environment and being exposed to those things, I knew it wasn't what I wanted. I knew this there was there was more to children or childhood than all of these things. You see children walking in the streets instead of being in school learning. You see um, children involving in all sorts of social vices like drug abuse, stealing, and the rest of them. Teenage pregnancy now, it's, it's now a norm. The, mm -hmm. It's no longer a thing of shame. So having the idea that these, these things are wrong and it should be corrected and it's it's a fundamental issue of mindset and perception. You know, we are somewhat limited to our exposure to our environment. So it takes mm -hmm. going out there and seeing what is obtainable, what is right, and then bringing it back into this community, into these societies where um, the relevant exposure to children is not being given. So that is what birthed the idea, the vision behind Preacher Child Initiative, and that is what we have been doing for the past couple of years now. And for my drive as a young leader, um, looking forward to participate in politics, in governance, I've come to realize that uh, leadership isn't necessarily about being in a position, but about leading yourself. I think we need to come to the point where we realize and recognize that um, it is the person that leads and not necessarily the mm. position. So when we have that realization, we focus on building our character. You know, a person has to be has to be judged not by the reputation or the office that they hold, but by the quality mm -hmm. of their personality and the content of their character. Mm. And I think as young people, we need to start paying attention to this part of our lives because that is what defines us. That is what determines our values and our principles as we go on. So leadership has to shift from positional to personality to character and that that has been my core that has been the core of what I do in the process of my journey because the end goal is to become an exemplary leader that 
people that young people like myself can emulate and see and want to learn because we have a lot of we have a lot of things in the society today that are impacting young people young people negatively mm -hmm. um the social media now we live in a society where you know um results are celebrated without necessarily no, the exposing process, the yeah. process yeah. so we now celebrate results mm -hmm. beyond the process i think we, we need to because the media is also one of the things that shape culture in our in our society today and it's very important that we start to now expose young people to the process to timing to learning i have i have the understanding that three things are necessary to stand the test of time to become a sustainable leader a sustainable to sustain the success that we are striving towards, and I've come to recognize them as KEN. Now, the first is knowledge. Of course, we have to build knowledge. We have to sure. increase um, the things that we know because out of it flows the issues mm -hmm. of, of life, basically. And then mm -hmm. we also have to, which takes us to the next one, which is the E, which I regard to as experience and exposure. And this has to do with the things that we do with the knowledge that we've acquired. It's mm -hmm. not okay to, it's not enough to just acquire knowledge, mm -hmm. but do something with the knowledge that you have. That is where competence is built. And as well, increase your exposure. Go out there, see how better it can be done and implement it to your personal lives. And then the third is the N, which stands for network. Network has to do with the people that have access to you and the people you have access to, um, who know you for what mm -hmm. you do. And um, I think if we pay attention to these three things, I think every young person will grow into becoming that thought leader that they want to be in their respective fields and not as opposed to, you know, just wanting to blow and just make it. And it is not sustainable. These are the things that makes it sustainable. So that is what has been my core. That, those are the things that I stand by and that I run with. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Mm. I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> see how I mean, we're, we're blown like, away. <laughs> Okay, I mean, Honorable Raphael, I'm, I'm just like, I hope people are listening. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you're speaking with so much um, knowledge, so much um, conviction, so much... Um, ex it, it, it means that the process for you, I mean, you're, you're walking the talk. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's evident, I mean, from everything that you have said that you understand what process is mm -hmm. and I, I particularly like that message you know this this thing you just said about young people understanding the role of process as against results yes again we celebrate too much of results without understanding that results that is not sustainable comes back to it, it, it literally it destroys things you know so process process that's the key thing that i'm taking from you today that the process is so important if we're leaning towards sustainability mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well so now there's something very interesting that has happened um honorable mm -hmm. rafael here has gotten an admission into the prestigious i think the african leadership university yes. right in um, kigali rwanda and he got this admission in june 2022 mm -hmm. and he's had to defer a couple of times right yes. um, due to lack of funds right mm -hmm. so now on the show we want to see um how we can assist him because we can see that this is somebody who's yeah. full of potential and who just needs some form of some form of head start you know to kick off kick this off and become a better person and help him achieve you know what it is that he is definitely capable of achieving and then in this light we're calling for support to um for rafael's dream we want to raise 13 he needs to raise thirteen thousand dollars to support his education um like i said earlier he got admission into the prestigious african leadership university of, in kigali to study entrepreneurial leadership and he was award, already awarded a substantial scholarship by the institution um due to his exceptional abilities but then he also needs to come up with some money you know to be able to further his education and on the screen we have um, an account we have the account details where you can send your donations too. You could also, there's also a GoFundMe account where you can also um, support him through that through that link. So please, would actually like to call on the support of our viewers. I mean, you've heard him speak. You've heard him 
talk about the things that he's really passionate about. You can tell that he's very passionate about leadership and governance. And on the show here, we're all about the young minds, right? And so we are really supporting this young mind who is here with us tonight. And hence, that's why we're calling to help get Raphael to ALU. And we, we definitely believe that you, our viewers, have the capacity and you would... You would help him achieve this long dream of his. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's 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 come back to leadership and governance now, Raphael. So um, I would like to ask. I understand that you've held certain leadership roles in the past, and you right now you're also currently running yeah. an NGO. What are the challenges that you think young people face, and how do you think they can overcome these challenges? Okay, <clears throat> the first of many is the. Um, limitation, the mindset that you're too young mm -hmm. to start. I, it's obvious that um, we live in a society that shuns young people rising and shining. Um, we need to differentiate the place of process and the place of starting because it isn't the process. It's in the starting. We need to um, we need to learn to support young people. Um, and not, you know, look down on mm -hmm. the little things that they do because it's those little things that, you know, eventually become the big things, the, mm -hmm. the big names that we know today that we celebrate. They all started somewhere. They all started, uh, you know, from the little things. So these sim similar little things build up to become um, bigger things. That is one challenge that we face as young people, you know, having support from people that have gone ahead of us and, you know. And then the second is, um, you know, the will power to to sustain the energy with which we started this one is a personal one that that, that comes from us as young people and uh, it's sort of questions are why mm -hmm. why are we doing this in the first place why do we decide to do this um you know follow this part or whatever course that we're that we're taking um at every point in time i i think that it is necessary to question our uh, why because the why gives us the energy to sustain the drive so um yeah that's pretty much um some of the challenges that we face okay, okay. so i mean what we're talking about how we can encourage the young people to actually go into um governance and leadership in yes. in nigeria that's why i actually asked that question so how do you think you, you talked about supports. You said, okay, um, the, the, the older generation should um, endeavor to support the younger ones, right? Yes. To help groom them. So, like Norma rightly said at the beginning of the show, mentorship, yeah. right? Yes. So, they need some level of mentoring. So, these people, I remember when we talked about the doctor's um, brain drain, <laughs> living in Nigeria and whatnot. This was a very big deal. The medical practitioners yeah. mentioned that they don't get enough support from the older ones, their senior colleagues. And you are mentioning the same thing, which just shows that clearly, there's truly a divide, yeah. right? Yeah. So there's a gap that we need to fill. So first things first, support. And we, we, we hear you on that one. Mm -hmm. Jola. Okay, so um, my question would be that do you think that um, young people are actually ready? I mean, yes, I know the election, you know, that just happened. There's a lot of young participation and all that. But again, sometimes, you know, we like to ride on waves, yes. you know. Um, do you really think that um, young people, I mean, considering the fact that we just spoke about um, the society honoring a lot of um, results rather than process. So yes. do you think that young people are truly interested in the process, are truly, you know, about you know what i want to get my head in the game i want to push on even if the results are not in the immediate mm. do you really think that i mean this is something that if we take this campaign around you know it will get the buy-in of a lot of young people i think young people are ready not because of um, i think as much as we have the things we see on social media that young people do i feel they are still young younger people in the environment that are actually doing the work, that are actually putting in the work. Mm -hmm. But uh, the bulk of the perception based on media visibility and all, we tend to generalize mm -hmm. that young people are just uh, out there to, you know, just get it, you know, get it quick without following the process. I, I, I feel a lot of young persons are ready and we're actually seeing it now mm -hmm. with the level of involvement in different spaces, you know, the future is now. Younger, young people are actually coming out to take over industries, taking over ministries, taking over, you know, territories. Mm -hmm. So 
as much as we have young people who still need to learn to understand the process, there are actually other young persons that are putting in the work and are hoping to grow. So we are ready. We are ready. Very well done. Very well done. Okay, if you're just tuned in, we're discussing leadership and governance, catching them young with Honorable Rafael Ikuimo, who recently got an admission into the prestigious African Leadership University in Kigali and needs our support to achieve his dreams. If you would like to donate the details that have been displayed for you to do so, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038 You could also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag ways show okay um norma do you have any other questions for our guest tonight yes i do have so i wanted to ask Rafael. i mean he's had quite a bit of uh, exposure and experience in leadership and governance as a young person which is something that a lot of young people want to find themselves in so i wanted to find out from Rafael that what has been the most rewarding part of being uh, exposed young and uh, being able to be involved in governance and leadership? What, what has been the most rewarding part for you? Well, for me, the most rewarding part of it all is the ability to first see yourself beyond... Um, beyond the ordinary having a sense of responsibility for your peers I, I i i i of course there are other you know perks that comes with it you know the test of leadership you know being exposed to certain kind of people and places but beyond that it's mm -hmm. it, it's builds it's a mindset shift from you know the ordinary you know it starts from um having De making the decision to be different, you know, set apart, excellent uh, in all things, not being conformed to the limitations and flaws of your environment. So uh, all of that, the biggest value, the biggest um, value for me for in, through the process is the mindset shift. And it is priceless. It is really, really priceless. I cherish it and I do not take it for granted. Mm -hmm. So, 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 Raphael, what, just to add to that question, what advice do you have for young people who are considering becoming youth leaders, but, you know, come from similar backgrounds? I mean, I read part of the pro, uh, your profile that said you grew up in Ajigule, and you came out with this amazing mindset. You were able to rise beyond the, the, the challenges of the environment that you grew up in. So what advice would you give somebody who is aspiring to also be like you? Okay. Uh, I think we cannot talk about leadership in any scale without mentioning the smallest unit of it, which is the family. Uh, like I said earlier, the role of parenting and the family cannot be overemphasized in the proper upbringing of children. Um, for young persons out there who are wanting to become leaders, um, it's, um, the only way it says guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. Mm -hmm. I think the very first thing to work on is the mindset. And how do you do mm -hmm. that? By gaining the right exposure selectively choose the things that you're exposed to because today in our society mm -hmm. there are so many distractions there are so many things that can derail you from your path after identifying the path you want to go into um, go through what you want to do your purpose your passion the next thing is to selectively see the things that comes into your space that comes into your mind because Everything that comes out is first a product of the mind. So I think the first thing is to work on the mindset. Understand that um, you're not ordinary, you're different. And be deliberate about growing. Be deliberate about following the mm -hmm. process. Um, of course, mm -hmm. let us not give in to delayed gratification. Of course, the rewards might not come in immediately, but when we are consistent and persistent at what we want, I mean, it is almost inevitable that um, the end of it will be very much better than the beginning. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you so much, Russell. I, 
I mean, awesome. I, I like awesome. I like what he has said about you know the units of family and what the role that the family actually has to play. I also think it's also a thing of an individual as well because you know there are a whole lot of young people out there these days who are really lazy and don't want to put in the work. Mm. You know, so they just feel like okay, these things should just come without putting in any work, you know, we should just, I should have everything it is that I want or what that I desire at the, 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 at the tip of my fingers, right, without putting any work into it. And which is why we have him on the show today, because we know that this is someone who is actually putting in mm. the effort and doing as much as it is that he can, you know, to be able to become a better person and then to achieve his, his goals as well. Um, yeah. So, um, Rafael, I would just like you to say your last words, right, for... The viewers, especially the young people, what what words of encouragement would you possibly give them? Ah, uh, well, um, I'll give, I'll tell you what I'll t what I always tell myself, and um, that is to be focused. Mm. Be focused. Ah, uh, we live in a time where there are a lot of distractions. Be focused. Mm. Identify what you want to do, and stay at it. Stay at it. Stay at it because it, it's not it does it's seemingly not working out now doesn't mean okay. it's not going to work out eventually so stay at it and be focused mm. get every knowledge every experience and every network that you need along the line along the journey but be focused it's easier to go on a straight line than going in circles or in waves stay on one path and be focused and you will eventually get there that's actually a very, a very bright, <laughs> bright adverse. We, because you see, the truth is that we young people these days actually, there are a lot of distractions, yeah. truth be told, yeah. you know, yeah. left, right, and center. There are different things that can, you know, make you derail from whatever path it is that you're going on. But then, like he has rightly said, and this is probably his well um, kept secrets mm -hmm. that he's sharing with us today. And he said, First things first, be focused. Don't give up. Yeah, sometimes you might experience... And don't let whatever situation it is or what box it is that you're in at, that, at the time, you know, pull you down. We've heard where it is that he grew up. We've heard where he's come out from. But he's not allowed that to deter him. He's not allowed that to keep him back from, you know, experience, you know, living, you know, getting the things that he would actually want to get, get out of life. So, yeah, I, I, I really do admire you. I admire you your courage. Much. I admire your strength as well. I mean, pulling off, but talking to you, I'm calling you honorable Raphael. God <laughs> win. <laughs> so, I must say, very well done, Raphael. Very, very well done. Jola, any last words? Oh, yes. Um, well, anywhere we find ourselves, um, we must lend a helping hand. You know, we must support each other. Um, nation building is everybody's business. You know, there's no, oh, mm -hmm. there's a particular group of people or we must all come together. So if mentoring, if you identify someone around you with potential and you have the opportunity to mentor such a person, please, by all means, mentor, but don't stifle because that's another thing that is, you know, very popular. We mentor, yeah. but we cage people. We don't want them to, you know, get bigger than, you know. So let us mentor. Let us do well by the people around us. And together, I'm sure that we'll walk towards the great nation that we all want. No more, any last words? Well, I mean, this has been just awesome, just amazing. I think the one thing I would just say or will reiterate from all we've said is that being deliberate about growing is very key. I mean, both the young and the old. Mm. The old must be deliberate about mentorship. The young must be deliberate about growing, about expanding, about being all that they can be. And together, I believe that Nigeria can become the desirable place that it was meant to be. Thank you so much, Noma. Before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Weisho Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. Remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch and follow us. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. It doesn't matter when we start. It doesn't matter where we start. All that matters is that we start. And this is by Simon Sinek. Thank you so much, Anubi Rafael. It was a pleasure having you in the studio Thank you so today. Much for you. Thank you, ladies. Today, Monday tonic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Good night.